How's Amazon going this month? I'm not going to lie, guys. It is not going great. I'm on, you know, £5,000 profit this month. My next goal after this is then building that community around. How did I monetize a community? You know, you guys know I'm thinking about going to Dubai. I'm going out in January, potentially move out there. Hello and welcome to another driving vlog. I'm doing this on a Monday morning uh, rather than the usual Sunday. I'm going to be giving you guys an update on everything to do with Amazon and how my business is going which this month is not good so stay tuned for that but yeah hey guys how's it all going hope you're all well thanks for joining me on another driving vlog like I say normally I do these on a Sunday when I'm driving to my parents but today I'm going to Warwickshire or Warwick I don't know anyway to go and drop something off or return something yeah I thought I'd just do the driving vlog now basically I know it's been a little bit of a while since I've done one of these but I've not had the opportunity to actually record them so but yeah now I thought you know what I'll do this Cool, yeah, so how's Amazon going this month? I'm not going to lie, guys, it is not going great. I'm on, and I apologise, because I know many of you aspire to these kind of numbers, but for me, they're not particularly good, but I'm on, you know, £5,000 profit this month, and we're on the 21st, so given that kind of rate, I'll be lucky to get around 7,500 profit. I'm a little bit lost to, exp well, actually, not totally lost, but... You know, I've got a lot of stock in Amazon. I've got £115,000 worth of stock in Amazon. I think the problem though is it's all Q4 items and I've kind of got my prices held for Q4. Now we're in Q4 already to be fair, but October is still a little bit of a slow month, I think. And I think, you know, my time will come hopefully in November, December. But yeah, it's something that's definitely been annoying really. And I've been very tempted to go through all of my prices and maybe just drop the prices down a little bit to sell through. And I still might do that a little bit and just do an audit. And the only problem with it is someone, I don't know, yeah, some software could be good here to help this out. But for me to do this and go through all my stuff, it's gonna take me like a couple of days. I've got 350 SKUs, something like that. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting one anyway, but I definitely need to go through and maybe see if I can accelerate the sales some of my items a little bit but yeah i've been very disappointed with those profits this month been sourcing a little bit too you know but i've got quite a lot on amazon as it is yeah i've bought a few good products i had a pallet arrive i've been obviously ordering from kugita which you know if you guys are not signed up check out the link below get yourself 120 pound off your first order but yeah i've been ordering quite a lot from kugita yesterday i think it was Actually, it's weird because, yeah, uh, my prep centre said yesterday, uh, uh, I guess it arrived on Saturday, maybe. I had a pallet delivered from Kugita, so that was a bunch of Q4 items, all aftershaves, actually. So 1,500 units of perfume, all on a pallet, which is really nice. Um, so hopefully, come Christmas, I'll be able to be very happy and go, yay, I'm making loads of money. Uh, but right now, it's slow as hell. Anyway, but yeah, I've been ordering loads from Kugita. And I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about in this video actually a little bit was, yeah, I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about in this video a little bit, and possibly I'll do a whole video around this, about how my Amazon business is evolving and how my sourcing strategies have changed over time. Yeah, you guys know I'm a big OA guy, and yeah, but, but recently, my strategy's changed ever since I've really cottoned on to Kogita. And I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I should double check, since I'm a brand ambassador. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I've been ordering basically exclusively Amazon to Amazon and Quigita. Those are two things I've been doing and I've not got enough money to buy you new know, leads. So as you get better at sourcing particular strategies, I'm going to do a whole other video around sourcing actually, which I'm going to do, hopefully I'll film that today actually when I get back. Yeah, it's, for me it's been working out really well, Kogita and just eight away. For me that's more than enough. And yeah, when you get good at sourcing a particular method, you will hopefully, you know, be get good at it and you'll be sourcing lots of products and have plenty of products to buy and not enough money. So, you know, and that's a good place to be in I suppose. Better than being the other way around. Unless you've got millions of pounds, I suppose. <laughs> In which case, yeah. But for me, that's been really working well. I've been finding plenty of products to buy. Obviously, it's really nice to buy in bulk as well from Kogita. And you always get that VAT invoice as well, which is really nice. So very easy to chase down and reconcile with your account, you know, account and stuff. So for me, that's been really easy. Just doing Amazon to Amazon and Kogita just works really nicely for me. Now, as I said, if you guys are not signed up to Kogita, check out the link below. Um, and I've done a whole video about this, but the three tools that I use to source 
is I'm using Kugita Price Drops, which is a paid server which monitors Kugita for any price drops and then alerts you to them. Secondly, I'm using Arbisource as well. So Kugita Price Drops will spit out those things into a file that you can put into Arbisource and Arbisource will run through and tell you if they're profitable or not. And then obviously using Kugita as well. So those three things have become really powerful. Look at the old coal fire station on the right here. That I think was the last coal uh, power station uh, that's been shut down recently. So the last one in the UK. Good to see that coal's being phased out of the UK. So yeah, I mean, it's been a interesting month and say, you know, in terms of it's, I'm not getting those results, but overall I'm happy with what I've bought, the stock I've got, things like that. So, you know, it's, it's gonna be, time's gonna tell basically where the strategy pays off. It should pay off, you know, I've done all the analysis and stuff like that. Nothing seems to have bricked too much. I think I'm just maybe being optimistic with my prices just a little bit. But yeah, it's overall, you know, not it's not too bad anyway. So I still made 5,000 profit so far. You know, realistically, let's knock off 2,000 for expenses, being honest. So that's probably takes down to 3,000 pounds. So if I, if I get to like 7,000 profit by the end of the month, then I'll be on about 5,000 profit after expenses. So. You know, that's, that's okay. That's still 60,000 a year, which is not bad. It tides me over anyway. So, and obviously that's, that's a good income. But yeah, obviously I like those 10,000 months. And I just put that video out a few days, well, about a week or two ago, where I was like, this is how you do 10,000 every single month. And then as soon as I do that, the next month I don't get 10,000. Anyway, typical. But as long as it averages out, I suppose, then that's okay. It seems cold outside, but it's not cold. Now, before I carry on, I just want to mention that this video is sponsored kindly by Profit Protector Pro. Now, if you guys know, the best repricer, in my opinion, that you can get is Profit Protector Pro. It is literally the best repricer. It's the one that I use. I've been using it for six plus months now. It's definitely changed my Amazon business versus my old repricer. And, you know, it's just so easy to set up and use. Set your min, set your max, and let it go. It's just been fantastic for me. So I definitely recommend you guys give that a go. Then they've got a, a seven day or 14 day free trial. You can check that out in the description. There's a link for that as well. Uh, but yeah, really good. And honestly, the amount of people that I've told to use Profit Detector Pro, and they've ummed and ahmed over it for ages and then finally used it and then come back to me and said, Simon, I should have gotten to PPP ages ago. And I was like, yes, this is what I'm telling you. I'm not just selling it to you. I'm literally telling you, this is good. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> um, but you know, sometimes you can't lead a horse to water, I guess is the, the term or whatever, you know. It really is very good. So check that out, link in the description. And thank you PPP for sponsoring this video. But yeah, it's been definitely interesting this month as well in terms of, um, you know, section threes and um, ungating has been very difficult. So I know a bunch of people got hit with section threes. And I talked about this in my podcast with Nikos. I need to get onto that again, actually. I need to get it ongoing because um, people absolutely love that stuff with Nikos. So the podcast with Nikos. So definitely need to arrange another one. Hopefully today or tomorrow, actually, I'll get that uh, recorded. Yeah, it's been interesting. So problems that I've had, I've bought a load of Paco Rabanne stuff um, from Quigita and I cannot for the life of me get ungated. So it's just, just being a real pain. And Amazon right now are being very strict on ungating. They are wanting your supplier's supplier, which is just ridiculous. No one's ever gonna give you that. And that's very commercially sensitive information. Oh shit, I just went the wrong way. Fuck, hopefully it's not gonna be too bad. There we go. Um, that's very, this is what you get for, uh, not knowing where I'm going and yeah, anyway. So yeah, it's very commercially sensitive information to ask for your supplier's supplier. So for example, with Paco Rabanne, I use my usual long gate method. I, I ordered from Latino and um, they just said, no, we need your supplier's supplier. So they, they want me to go back to ask Latino where they're buying it from, which is just ridiculous. They're never gonna give me that information and they're certainly not gonna give that to Amazon as well. So, you know, absolutely crazy stuff really. So, the, but yeah, they've been very, strict with the young gates at the moment which is really annoying i see a few people a little bit concerned about it i think it's just a temporary thing i think they're just clamping down a little bit you know and gating used to be very difficult then it became very easy now i think it's becoming a bit more difficult again in the long term i guess this is okay it adds a barrier to entry for people you know it makes it maybe not quite as easy for people to get into amazon but at the same time you know if you're willing to persevere and push through these 
you know, tough times, then, you know, you'll be rewarded. So, you know, no business ever goes smooth. There's always problems that arise. Right now it's ungating. Some people have been hit with section threes, which essentially are authenticity claims, you know, uh, asking for, you know, invoices or some of their um, items, which you should have anyway, guys. You should always order from, you know, obviously legitimate sites and sites that give invoices. That way you can fight these claims. Uh, that's a pretty standard thing that you should be doing anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a very interesting time with Amazon. They've been quite strict, I suppose. And I'm not sure where this has come from, but I think apparently they opened the floodgates a little bit more to China. I think maybe it was a little bit of a, they were worried about Timu. So I think they've made it easier to onboard Chinese sellers. I was watching a YouTube video about this the other day. And now they're probably maybe regretting that a little bit because you've got a lot of bad actors coming onto the website and, and, and selling fakes, which means we're now suffering, despite the fact we've been running a legitimate business, you know, or, or trying to run a legitimate business. So it's one of those, I guess, unintended consequences, and now we're suffering for it. But anyway, so all I've got to say really is just, persevere make sure you all your, all your documentations in check um, and you'll be fine but yeah ungating wise my advice really you know as I'm doing with myself Paco Raban I'm just letting it cool off for a few weeks before I try again it even got to the point actually where they just basically just weren't even looking at my documentation after I you know said to, to Amazon oh this is all legit blah 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 they just kept e emailing without saying this is not an invoice or some rubbish like that you know, you're, they kept saying, you're not allowed to send a receipt or an email confirmation. I'm like, this isn't an, any of those. This is an invoice. And they kept just responding with the same rubbish. So letting it cool off, and I'll try again, maybe in a week or so. It's not too late for, um, you know, for Christmas and this stuff, but I've got quite a lot of packer band to go in. So I went quite heavy on this, um, on this stuff. So yeah it's a bit of a shame but it is what it is you gotta push through it and worst case scenario i have to ebay this stuff so yeah um but yeah quigita has been fantastic for me really has i've got so many good deals from there it's kind of insane just obviously a shame that with some of this packer band stuff i can't sell it um but yeah overall just fantastic to be fair I don't think what else is going on with Amazon really. Um, obviously you guys hopefully know that I've got a 100% free Discord community that is growing really nicely. So in that you can ask questions, get help, hang out with people. It's a really great place if you're looking to get into Amazon or whether you're already an Amazon seller, that is a fantastic place to go. Um, we've got nearly 800 members now actually, which is kind of crazy. I think we're 760 right now, which is just nice. I'm hoping to get to a thousand by the end of the year. That's my goal. And then, you know, in the future, I want to get to, you know, 2,000 or 3,000, 5,000. You know, those are my kind of ultimate goals, really. Getting a, a really big, I want, basically want to build the best Amazon FBA community out there, the free, best free one anyway. But yeah, it's made me think I'm definitely going to do a video on the strategy, my sourcing strategies right now, actually. I'll do that after this, basically. I'll film that when I get home, because I think that'd be a good video and helpful for people. Um, how have my strategies have changed over time? But yeah, it's been a very interesting time, say, on Amazon. Some people have been hit with Section 3s, which really sucks for them. Uh, I know, worst case scenario, some people have been asked for like, basically in, uh, invoices for all their inventory, which is kind of crazy. If Amazon did that to me, it'd take me weeks to get that together. Thank God I've got an admin VA. Um, you know, one thing I definitely recommend you guys get, if you can afford it, then, you know, is getting an admin VA. It's such a big deal, to be honest. Um, so I got mine from Outsource Central, and yeah, there's just been a game changer for me to, me to have an admin VA, because they're obviously to, able to chase down invoices for me, keep it all very organized, do all my extra stuff. And to be honest, I'm not even utilizing my VA for anything really beyond just invoices right now, but they'll do loads of tasks in Amazon. I've just not done, you know, gotten to that point yet. But yeah, it's been a bit of game changing for me. And once I actually let go of some more tasks, then it's gonna be even better for me. You know, some more Amazon tasks. But yeah, definitely recommend you check them out if you wanna get an admin VA. But yeah, you've gotta stay on top of your invoices. Um, and yeah, my goal this week is I need to get this excuse my language, bloody course out. I've been procrastinating on it for ages. There's a few steps in it that I just can't replicate my, you know, do. One of them is like creating an Amazon account. I'm trying to build this beginner's course or beginner to intermediate course. And I can't even make the first video because it's like, how do you create an Amazon account? So just need to get over that and just need to get this stuff made. Um, it's been really quite annoying actually uh, that I've not done this yet. So my, that's another goal for the end of the year is I want to get this course. So I've got a couple of courses in mind. 
One is going to be, you know, a, essentially what is a beginner's to intermediate course. So getting people on board into Amazon and learning how to do Amazon and, you know, getting the basics down. And then I'm probably going to do another course which is going to be specifically around sourcing. So I still will teach sourcing in the beginner course. You kind of have to. It's a central part of Amazon. But yeah, I want to do a specific separate course or maybe multiple courses on you know how do you do like newsletter sourcing which some people seem to be very anti newsletter sourcing at the end of the day all I can really do is tell you about my experiences and what I've done you know to, to source and if people don't want to believe it or don't think it's a good method then I guess that's up to you really to decide if you don't like it I mean sure you may have your different we might have different of opinions on you know whether you think it's a good method or not but yeah or whether you like it but for me that's what's worked that's what I've done um, it's going to be one of my solid sourcing methods for a good six eight months yeah I've seen a bit of a backlash on some people saying that uh, you know I must be looking at some amazing newsletters yeah I don't know what people people just want to be literally given the deals like I guess they want the site to basically email out saying hey Amazon sellers here's a deal for you and then, you know, that's what they want, but then they'll complain as well that things tank. It just, it doesn't, anyway, it's people, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what to say really. You've got to do some work in this business. Like, it's not just gonna be given to you on a platter. If it is, then it will be easy and everyone will do it and there'll be no money to be made. So, you know, it's one of those weird things, I guess. Anyway, so I was gonna do a, yeah, a specific course on maybe newsletter sourcing, a specific course on, and I need to learn actually how to do it myself properly, but keep a product finder, um, things like that. I'm not sure if it'd be one course or multiple courses, but yeah, that's something I need to do basically, like a hardcore, you know, good solid course on how to do sourcing, because people seem to really struggle with it. And even when I do this, people are still gonna struggle, because I guess, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I give the information out for free, people still throw it back in my face, you know. Anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. It does, fr it does frustrate me because I'm trying to help people. You know, I actually gave someone a few months ago uh, literally the, you know, keys to the, the vault, essentially. Some really sensitive information, in my opinion, and to help him out, help them out, and they just did nothing with it and then kind of leaked out to loads of people which was just crazy. Any of you were there, you know what this was. And to me, this was just like madness. I literally, yeah, I don't even, I was actually speechless because I gave out some really hot information on sourcing and it, nothing was done with it. And then just leaked out to loads of people, which I was really just like, what that yeah i don't know yeah it's mental really i just can't even just yeah it was mental so you got i don't know if i'm being maybe not like making any sense here but yeah uh, it was it was mental so that was kind of nuts so yeah you can literally lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink that is literally something i've realized and it's it's a shame but i guess some people can't be helped and i yeah it does upset me a little bit because i'm trying to help as many people as possible but yeah, some, you just can't help some people. Anyway, all I can do is talk about what I've done, my experiences, how I've done it, what I've learned from other people, and then obviously people then choose to either take on the information or not, really. That's, I guess, all I can do, really, is do my best to give out this information. But um, yeah, I guess to some people it just doesn't click. So that is a very frustrating thing I've come to realize in doing, I guess, this online education around Amazon is yeah it's very it can be very tough at times to uh, get people to understand but maybe i need to improve my teaching methods maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah i was speechless let's put it like that when that happened uh, <laughs> i was actually in shock a little bit um anyway so yeah i need to think about doing those kind of courses anyway around because uh, i think it's 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 amazing i get i obviously speak to a lot of people i help a lot of people people take advantage of the one-on-one -on -one calls that i do the free one-on-one -on -one calls when you join my server and the main thing that everyone struggles with literally every single person pretty much without fail i can't source how do you source so i think having a course out there is really going to help with this you know even though the information is already out there you know, I've kind of already covered it a little bit as well. But yeah, it's just literally no one can source. 
and it's kind of crazy really because it's literally the most essential part of the business um, and it just reco- oh, there is no shortcut to learning to source either you just need to need to sit down and do it every day regularly and get good at it there's no shortcuts really now obviously you can join certain uh, discord servers like cookie to price drops you can join certain servers like profit sweep which will give you leads that's fantastic and they're great i always well consider profit sweep anyway the icing on the cake cookie actually the cookie to price drops is actually like a real solid like you know meat and potatoes server right now because not many people in it and it's very undersaturated and a really fantastic method to make money but at the same time you still need to really know how to source yourself anyway because nothing good ever lasts in amazon that's one thing i've learned as well is no strategy or category or you know method or anything will last in amazon things are always changing if you find some killer thing that you're selling for example it won't be long till other people have found it unless you've got some really exclusive deals or something going on or if you find a very killer method or a site you know and to us i shout to the houses about cogita i mention it all the time and again it's like very hard to get people literally to to do it i'm like there is it's a gold mine on there and then people ask me well why are you if it's a gold mine why are you sharing it the answer is one i'm a brand ambassador for cogita so that's one of them the second one is i don't have enough money to buy the leads on there um i literally do not have enough money to buy the leads on there it's freaking crazy you could give me 200 grand right now and I'd be able to spend it within probably a month and I wouldn't have enough money to buy all the leads. So there is too many deals out there and that's one reason I share it. And obviously I like helping people as well. I think there's room for everyone. But, um, but yeah, that's not, yeah, one thing you learn really. And I say Adam, a guy I chat to, and I've, you know, I've done an interview with him as well, a podcast, in, you know, who does private label. You know, he, even he comes to realise that pri- even private label's not is maybe solid as you realize as you think you know people think well i'm gonna you know get a product from china i'm gonna build up a brand i'm gonna get my listing going i'm gonna get to the point where i'm making x amount per month off it and i'll be all happy but no someone comes along and does something you know against get bad actors so what happened with adam he had a fantastic product i think he was making between three and five thousand pound profit per month from it and then someone came along and hit him with a trademark claim a totally unfounded not trademark it might be a trademark claim i think yeah so you know and he's now having to fight that with amazon amazon are being absolute pain in the butt so you know come to realize that you can never basically be stagnant in this business you need to always be looking forward to the next thing always be kind of innovating if that makes sense always be don't be a follower be a leader if you can so be willing to put that extra work in to find items and and places to buy from um yeah be willing to just yeah put that work in basically to you know wait, where am i going here i need there's two lanes yeah so you know be willing to yeah put that extra level of work in beyond other people because in one thing i've come to also realize as well is people are lazy so people literally do want things handed on a platter to them but then at the same time they'll moan about the fact that everything tanks price tanks so it's just like you can't have it both ways you can't be given everything on a platter and then expect it to be exclusive to you that's not possible really so um yeah anyway (laughs) i've been a bit ranty here but i'm just frustrated because i'm trying to help people it's such a ridiculous opportunity amazon and um yeah it just like it does frustrate me because i'm trying to help people i put all the information out there and then yeah it's just people just don't listen i suppose but um, i'm not saying everything that i do is the right way um there are multiple again another great lesson as well is there are multiple ways to do this business there's not one single way and in fact i think if you figure out your own way in a way, well you can learn from people like learn from me learn from other people and then you can use that to get success and then you can then try and forge your own path i think that's probably the best way to do amazon to be honest or maybe any business but certainly with amazon is like yeah learn from other people first and i always say this phrase like first years for learning second years for earning and yeah basically just do that just just um, learn from me and learn from other people get some success under your belt get some confidence in business get your get some experience on amazon 
and then you can start thinking about other strategies, other ways you can do the business, other categories, other sourcing methods, other ways to buy items, other whatever it is basically. I think that's a really good bit of advice actually that I give to people. And that's where you're gonna to get to that next level of like taking your business from maybe two or 3,000 profit to five, 10, 15, 20,000 is when you're willing to do that extra level of effort beyond what other people are. So yeah, I think, just trying to do like Amazon to Amazon, for example, unless you've got some very exclusive monitors and stuff, you're literally gonna to struggle to ever get beyond maybe two, 3,000 profit a month. Now that's still pretty good. I think you can make 2,000 profit a month pretty much consistently by doing Amazon to Amazon, you know, exclusively, which is really great. And then you can do that with Profit Suite. Again, links for all these in the description. But um, if you wanna to get to those next levels though, you definitely, I think, need to, yeah, just have your own, ways of doing things and yeah your own say sourcing categories or whatever it is anyway so sorry it's been a bit ranty this video <laughs> um, like I said I just find the whole thing frustrating a little bit um, but yeah so and, so another thing I want to do at some point now I've got a, I've now got a video editor which is fantastic I've got a full-time video editor who I'm not utilizing fully um, you know he's making a lot of shorts for me now which is good I need to really start giving him loads of videos to edit for me but that's one thing that's now helping me it means I can now spend more time actually recording stuff um, and you know one of the things I want to talk about potentially or and actually in another channel I've got this whole idea so I guess I can just talk tell you about my business strategy I suppose if you want I don't know if I've talked about it in the past but now obviously I started off doing Amazon FBA and I've had great success with that I made you know, a decent living out of that it's paid my bills that's all I ever really wanted was to pay my bills you know and actually admittedly when I first got into Amazon I only wanted to make 2,000 a month 3,000 a month and that's what I was going to be happy with I wanted to put in just enough effort to get to the point where I made 2,000 a month 3,000 a month and then focus on the software side now what happened is I got sucked into the Amazon world because I realized the opportunity was so enormous to make and I see people putting in you know big profit numbers every single month and I wasn't happy with just making 2,000 then I wanted to make more <laughs> so I got sucked in you know uh, more than I ever expected but um, yeah I just got it, it, not in, you know I'm not jealous of people that obviously make 15 20,000 a month but I was inspired by them and I was like you know what if they can do it then I can do it well looks like someone's had a crash over there that's not good it's a proper crash and yeah so then obviously I wanted to get into the software side now I've kind of put that to the side a little bit now and obviously now doing the social media and building up that and the discord community and that's now my main focus of business which maybe is why my Amazon FBA perhaps is suffering a little bit because I definitely don't focus 100% on Amazon FBA now but another, I just want to point out before we move on as well while I don't put in that many hours of FBA, Amazon FBA right now probably like an hour or two every day is on average don't let that fool you. In the first sort of year and a half, two years of doing Amazon, I'd say probably a year and a half, I lived and breathed Amazon FBA. So 10, 12 hours every day, I was doing Amazon FBA. So I was ultra focused on it. You know, whenever I was driving, I was listening to YouTube videos, I was talking to people, obviously selling as well, getting experience, sourcing, all this kind of stuff. So I lived and breathed and did all that upfront, upfront work on Amazon FBA to get to the point now where I can still make decent money, you know, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 profit a month with very little effort on my part, to be quite honest with you. And one thing I've definitely not been very good at is, geez, like outsourcing all this stuff to other people. You know, that's an, one part of business that I need to get better at is letting go and, um, and systematizing my business and then outsourcing that onto other people, employees essentially. So anyway, so obviously start with Amazon FBA. Now my main focus is the social media side of things. Um, we've got some crazy person here doing undertakes. So yeah, obviously start with Amazon FBA. Oh God, we've got some crazy people here. God, let's record this. That's going to be very dodgy. Let's start again there, God, because there are a lot of crazy people driving. Um, now obviously started off with Amazon FBA, had some good success with that. Next element is obviously I created my Discord community, my YouTube channel, teaching people, mainly because I realized the opportunity was, Amazon's such a fantastic business and there's room for everyone. So, you know, um, helping people get into that. Obviously, I'm looking to monetize this. You know, I'm not, make, not, not Mother Teresa here. Um, you know, I still like the free model that I do. I think it's not many people have done this model and I really like it actually. 
and doing a monetization through this kind of free model, I think is working really well for me. Um, and maybe at some point I will do mentorship, although I really am on the fence on mentorship, to be honest. I really don't want to do it, if that makes sense. And I get asked nearly every day if I do mentorship. Part of me feels like I'm leaving money on the table, but you know, and if I did mentorship, I charge like, I already know what I charge, 3,000 basically is what I charge. It'd be like a 12 month thing or whatever. And so I already know, and I'd probably make some good money out of that. But on the flip side as well, it is a huge responsibility to take someone's money like that and then have that, I guess not, I guess a burden, I suppose you would say, or that responsibility to then teach that person, you know, because I'm, I'm not a scammer um, and I'd feel very responsible for basically making sure that person succeeded and that feels like a lot of stress for me to be quite honest with you. So yes, I could make a lot of money from that, but it does feel like a real, I'll be maybe burdening myself with something that I'm not willing to take on. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I like, I wanted to work for myself was to give myself freedom to kind of do what I want. And if I start having a lot of calls and a lot of students, then I feel like maybe I'll lose some of that freedom. I don't know, it's really weird, but sometimes I just like to sleep in and take the day off. I can't redo really that when I've got a bunch of you know, calls scheduled for the day. So it's kind of a weird, you know, it's a weird one anyway, but you kind of get the idea there that I'm not taking this thing lightly. It, it, yeah, it's an interesting one anyway. So obviously, you know, thought about monetizing this whole thing. But for me, I think the affiliate model works nicely. Give the information out for free. I think it's, a, I think it's the best model. Is it the most profitable model? Probably not. But I think it's the best model, the affiliate model. So I recommend products and services. I give, teach you how to do Amazon for free. Then if we're, if you're successful, I'm successful. Simple as that, basically. So that's the way that I like this model is that, yes, I can sell you on Profitex Pro, for example. And if you use it for one month, then I make like four pounds or whatever. Big freaking deal, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to be successful. So you obviously use that every single month because you're successful in your business. So that's the mo why I like the model of like education and teaching people for free. And then hopefully the reward is they'll use my affiliate links on software and services that I recommend and utilize them for a year, two years, five years, whatever, whatever they decide to do. And that is my reward. Like I say, not the most profitable way, um, but I don't know, it's the model that I like anyway. Anyway, going more on to the next level, I suppose, is obviously I'm building up the Amazon FBA Discord community. I want to get that to five, 10, 15, 20,000 members. You know, I've got very lofty goals on that. And then what I want to do really is go to that next level of then creating another YouTube channel where I then basically will teach people what I've then done. Just like with Amazon, I was successful with Amazon and then taught people how to do Amazon. Well, then what have I then done? I've then built a successful community around a niche, which is Amazon FBA. So then I'd like to teach people how I did that, you know, what my strategy was with that. Now, a lot of people do this already. They just say, oh yeah, build a course, charge loads of money for it, blah, blah, blah. They're a dime a dozen, but maybe teaching people how to do it the way that I did it. And um, but yeah, just teaching people how I essentially monetized teaching people how to do something. So that's kind of my next level. And it's got a larger audience basically for this. And Amazon FBA is very niche. Well, they do say riches, niches are riches or niches are riches if you're American. But yeah, so that's something I'm, I'm gonna wanna do next. And that's my next goal after I've got my Amazon FBA community to a really nice level. Now, one thing I definitely need to do, just like with now I've got a video editor and stuff like that, is I need to start hiring people to help out in the community, answering questions, because I'm not always there. I'm especially now trying to take weekends off as well. Again, when I first started doing my community and my YouTube and stuff, I was literally there answering questions all the time. I was literally on it constantly. and actually got extremely stressed. So now I've given, you know, said to myself, I wanna try and take some time off on the weekends, try not to do too much business on the weekends, but that means I'm gonna to have to obviously outsource to other people. So at some point, you know, if you're an experienced Amazon seller, let me know. I might hire you to come and like moderate the, the Discord community, basically be there to answer questions and things like that. So that's something, you know, I wanna do. 
get some people in there. Now, the community's never gonna be like a lead community. That's not what I wanna do. There's other people that do that way better than I could ever do. Profit Suite, for example, Create to Price Drops, for example. But yeah, being like an education uh, platform and a community platform. So that's something I need to work on is building up that so that it's a better community because there's only so much I can do myself. And to be honest, actually, one of the great things I love about the community is that there's like multiple opinions on things. So when people ask me questions, and you know what, sometimes it's better to ask, not, not me via DMs, but ask in the community, what's your opinion on this? And then I'll give you my opinion, other people give their opinion. I'm not right on everything that I know and do. I just talk about my experiences. So, you know, it's nice to have that community, you know. So anyway, that's something I definitely want to build up and need to learn how to essentially make it maybe a little bit more passive, if that makes sense, or a little bit more running itself rather than passive. There's no such thing as passive income. But yeah, then my say, God, this is a very long-winded thing, basically. But yeah, I want to basically my next goal after this, which probably won't happen for another year or two, is then building that community around. How did I monetize a community, and how you can do the same? And then, like I said, that's got a much broader audience. It could be someone, and I encourage people to do it as well. Do it for FBA. God, copy my model if you want. You know, go for it. I don't care. Um, everyone's got something to like offer you know different experiences and stuff like that and i encourage people to start youtube channels as well like i don't see it as competition you know i think it's just enriching the community so everyone's got their own experiences and point of view personality they can add to you know youtube whatever they want to do really but yeah when it comes to actually like this community building communities channel i want to do and community i suppose as well around it is yeah it's got such a bigger audience you can do it it could be anyone who's like maybe someone's really good at painting for example and they want to teach people how to do painting or build a community around painting well that's something they can do or maybe it's like doing warhammer or maybe it's it could be oh well, i'm not a fan of the crypto you know or something like that i don't, don't like crypto but yeah <laughs> um too many scammers but basically yeah teaching people how to build these communities and things like that so which yeah right now i've still got a lot of learning to do on this yeah anyway that's kind of where my plans are so far and obviously your plans change and stuff like that so now one thing that's uh maybe has been just on off a tangent quickly just from you know came to my mind obviously you know you guys know i'm thinking about going to dubai i'm going out in january to, to scout it out see if i like it and then potentially move out there and the main reason for this is like the tax situation that's going to happen in the 30th october with the new labor budget very worrying for a lot of people i think maybe that actually might be hurting sales potentially right now because i think a lot of people might be wondering well how much they're going to get taxed they're going to have enough money to spend at christmas things like that so i don't know if people are too worried about it just i don't know but yeah that's just something that popped into my head that maybe one reason why it's not just me by the way it's having poor sales i know a bunch of people are having poor sales as well i know one guy's having killer sales and everyone else is having poor sales <laughs> um but yeah going back to that whole like why is my october not going very well potentially that could be it i'm not sure uh or maybe it's just a little bit early for christmas but um, yeah, anyway, that's kind of my plans anyway with business right now and I guess life in general, potentially moving out to Dubai. I, I, do you know what? I'm half tempted to move out there anyway, even if the tax situation doesn't get bad in the UK. Um, I just feel like Dubai looks like a fantastic opportunity for people who are sort of go-getters, if that makes sense. You know, there's obviously pros and cons to living in Dubai, but definitely looks kind of exciting to be honest. So something i'm seriously considering interesting thing and i'll probably talk about that more in another video but yeah i'm getting close to my destination now anyway but yeah i hope you guys kind of enjoyed that i don't know random <laughs> podcast or you know driving vlog with me talking about business and amazon and stuff and I mean, one of my favorite topics and sometimes i do i do talk about it too much actually i need to round out my personality more <laughs> um is you know i just live and breathe business i just love talking business to people i love talking to business to no one or everyone as we could say here talking to a camera it's just yeah definitely my favorite topic to talk about but definitely need to round out my personality a little bit. Um, something I'm working on. You know, I'm, I'm also working on myself a little bit more at the moment as well. So in multiple ways, um, trying to lose the weight, you know, get back in shape, 
things like that. So, you know, always striving to improve, not just in business, but in life as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this anyway. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. I know I went off on quite a few weird little tangents and stuff like that. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. And again, I've mentioned quite a lot of services and products in this video, all those links in the description. You should definitely check those out. And again, this uh, video was sponsored by Profitech to Pro. Definitely check them out. They literally are the best repricer. Give them a go. Like this, you get a free trial. It's a no-brainer. And if you don't like it, fine. You know, use it for the free trial. But it really is that good. That's why I recommend it. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.